In this video, we want to talk about cascading dropdown. So one dropdown filters the item on the second dropdown, not just on a simple screen. We are taking it to data cards, actually an edit form, and to make it even better, we make it part of a SharePoint list. Let's get into it. Before we start, let me show you the setup and you'll see what I'm gonna do here. I have a list inside SharePoint and I called it Cascading Dropdown Demo. This list has nothing special. It has title, province, city, province, city. So I use province one, city one as one pair and I used province two, city two as the second pair. And on each one of them, I want to show you a different way of achieving this goal. So right in the middle of nowhere, uh, we get a list from the business team and they say, you know what? By now, this province and city, these are just a text field so users can freely type in the values, but we want to improve it a little bit. So we want the province to be a dropdown of all the provinces in Canada. Same thing goes with the city so that the users can pick up items from province and city list. And to do that, they give us an Excel sheet that contains the list of provinces and the cities. And this list actually looks like this. So before we start and getting into cascading stuff, I want to replace this text box with a dropdown and this text box with a dropdown that they read values from somewhere outside. And I don't want to make it a lookup. I want to import that Excel sheet inside SharePoint, although I can directly connect to Excel, but because I'm binding it to a SharePoint list, if someone goes there and changes the structure, it's gonna mess up a live site. So I'd rather be safe and bring this content inside a SharePoint list. So let's start with that first. Before we start, I want to show you that this is just a regular list. And if I click on it and I expand it, you will see these are all text boxes. We want to convert it to dropdown. So I go to my site content and I want to add a new list. This list is gonna come from Excel. I would say upload. I pick the list and I click on open. It brings in all the values, including province and city. Title, which is a province, is going to be the provinces. And a city field is going to be created. Again, a single line of text, which is going to be the city. We are good with that. It only shows you a few of the items, not all of them. So I click on next. And I give it a name as cities, provinces. I just get rid of the rest. And I click on create. So it creates a list based on the content that I have in that Excel file. So I have a list of all the provinces and the cities related to them. Great. So now our content is inside SharePoint and all we need to do, we need to bring it to a dropdown and replace that text box with the dropdown, but it's easier said than done. So we start by replacing a text input with a dropdown. Let's get to work. I go to the site content again, and I go to the list that I created, cascading dropdown demo. And in this list, we want to convert the text boxes to dropdown and eventually cascading dropdown. So here I click on integrate, I go to Power Apps, and I say customize forms to, to use my Power Apps, which is my silver bullet doing these things. And it is loaded. So basically it's an app I need to replace province inside this data card. I need to select this text box and I need to replace it with a dropdown. Now, here is the process. The control that we have here is the value controlled. Uh, people who have taken my Power Apps crash course, they already know. They just go deep inside the data card and everything that is inside it. But one of the controls that is inside the data card is the value control. Let me show you where it is. So if you can see inside this card, there are multiple controls. One of them is the value, data card value, which is basically this text box. We want to replace this one with another control, no matter what it is, I call it a new control. 
there are five things you need to do. And those five things are first, after you add the new control, you need to set the width and X of that control. So basically, if you want to see how big it is and what is the left margin of this control. To do that, I always pick the data card, make sure you click on advanced first and you unlock it. Then I expand it. Do not delete anything from here before you add your new control. So while the desired data card is selected, I click on plus and I say, drop down, add it. I just bring it right under it. If I just align the left side, the X property of this guy is going to be 32. The right property of this is going to be the width of the card minus 60. So basically, when the size of the card changes, this one accommodates to the new size. So I guess if I select this one and I pick the width, instead of a hard-coded value of 180, I can say parent width minus 60. And it simply aligns this control with everything else. So first step is done. X is set and width is set. Then we need to set the error message control Y value so that it fits right under our new control. Let me show you. If I go to my tree view here, there is another control here called error message. You see it's right under this text box. We want it to be right under our dropdown from now on. And the reason that we need to adjust it because it gets its Y property, basically the distance from the top of this card from this text input. So I pick the error message. I click on the Y and you see it gets it from the data card value. Before I replace that, I need to rename this. I call it dd underscore province one. And now if I pick that error message, instead of data value two, I can say dd province one and dd province one. So basically the error control says wherever this control is, put it right under it. Basically the Y of this control plus the height of it, which makes it this guy. Great. Did we forget to bring the content for this dropdown? Let's bring that first. So I click on this data connector. I click on add data. I need to get it from SharePoint. Click, click. Of course, it's in the Power Apps demo, and the list that I have is called Cities Provinces. This is the list that we just created. I click on Connect. And now, if I come back here for this control, I can pick the items. And instead of just a dummy value, I can say, you see this value? Cities Provinces. So if I run this now, you can see this dropdown at the moment has a list of all the cities, although it should give me the values of the provinces, which I will change it in a second. But at the moment, the main thing is that if I change the field that it's going to display to province, which is title, this one doesn't look that good because we have repeated provinces. Somehow we need to get the distinct value. All right, we will fix it. No worries. So I need to pick this one. And for the items that it's going to display, I say show me distinct. And for the field that I want, show me title because title represents the province, right? And this thing always returns one column that the title is result. So if I just run it, you will see it shows me a distinct value of all the provinces. So basically our control is ready now. So let's go back to our PowerPoint and continue with the rest. We set the error message, set the control display mode to match the parent. Say when I'm running this form, 
if I just open it, the form is in view mode. When I edit it, it takes the form to the edit mode. So what I need to do, I need to make this control somehow coordinate with the parent about the display mode. So when the parent is disabled, it should be disabled. When the parent is in view mode, this one should become view. If the parent is in edit mode, this dropdown should become edit mode. So basically, while this one is selected, we pick the display mode, and instead of hard-coded edit value, I say parent dot display mode, which is great so far. After that, you set the update property of the data card to the new control selected value. Basically, what I'm trying to say, when we submit the entire form, this card says, okay, which value should I get? And update the list in the backstage. At the moment, if you pick the update property of this guy, it's looking at that data card value text, which is this guy. Let me click on it and it highlights it so you see it's looking at this one. We don't want that. We want this card to get the value from this dropdown that we just added. So if we say dropdown underscore province one dot selected text dot value. And I click on save. Is there anything left? We are done with the update property of the data card. Set the default value of the new control to the default value from the data card. What I'm trying to say is that when the user clicks on a record to edit the record, this control, this dropdown, should show the value that the data card has it from the data source. So basically, we need to pick the default value, which is one, it doesn't mean anything at the moment. We need to say, set the default value, so basically the selected value, set it to parent.default, which as you can see, it immediately changes it to Manitoba. Now we can comfortably go here and delete this. And we can comfortably select this and move it a little bit higher. And guess what? Let me take you to the tree view. At the moment, if I select this error message, you will see it is right under it. Great. Let me just move it a little bit higher and see if it actually works. So let me just save it. If you go to File menu, publish it to SharePoint, publish to SharePoint. Now I go back inside SharePoint. I click on Cascading Dropdown Demo. I click on this guy. And if I click on Edit, it doesn't show me anything. Don't worry if that happens. Control C, close, close, and open a new window. Then reopen it again. Usually this one clears the cache and makes it easier for you. Click on Edit, and now our province shows Manitoba, and it is a dropdown. I can pick, for example, Alberta and save it, and you see the province one has changed to Alberta. Great. How about the city? Let me do it quickly. I go back to Power Apps again, and I do the city exactly the same way. So I expand it. I add a dropdown here. All right. We forgot to unlock it. No problem. It unlocks it for us. Left. I pick the width, and width is going to be parent width minus 60. The name of this is going to be dd underscore cities one. The items or the items that we have here, instead of the sample, is going to be cities, provinces. And this time we really, do, we really don't need to filter it. I can show the cities inside it, which is great. Now, for the data card, we need to set the update property. I set the update property to dd underscore cities one dot select text dot value. Great. Save it. And the default value for this is going to be parent dot default. Again, save. 
And the last thing that we need to do, I pick the error message. I need to set the Y property for this, which at the moment gets it from this data card. I need to replace this value by DD cities one, and the other one also is going to be DD underscore cities one. Save. Now, let me go back to my list. We set the X and width properties. We set the error message. We set the control display mode, did we? Oh, no, we didn't. So let me go back here, select this one, and I pick the display mode. Still, it says edit, select, and I say parent dot display mode. Again, save. Set the update property of the data card to the new control selected. We did that. Set the default value of the new control to the default value of the data card. We did that. Let me just test it again. So file, publish to SharePoint, publish to SharePoint. Again, let's refresh and see if we got it or we need to reopen it again. Edit. Nope, it still shows me a text box. No worries. Copy. I close this. I open the browser again. I paste this guy here, and if I click on this and I click on Edit All, you will see that Province is a dropdown and Cities is also a dropdown. Let me see if it actually works. Edit. So this Springfield, let me make it to Hanover and click on Save, and it changed the city one. So we learned how we can create a dropdown. We're still in a bit of cleanup. So I go back here and so I hit Power Apps. We don't need this text input anymore. I just delete it. We move this one a little bit higher. And I make this one also smaller to fit better. So Province 1 and City 1 are working fine. And if this is the first time you're replacing one control with another control inside the default data card, don't forget these five steps. You may want to take a screenshot of it or whatever. This process applies to every single control that you want to add to the data card. Now that we have everything, it's time to turn it into a cascading dropdown. So let's go back there and see how we can do that. I have two dropdowns. One is here, which is DD Province 1. We have another one, which is DD Cities 1. Province has nothing to do with us, but cities is something that we want to filter. So basically, we say the items depends on DD Province 1 result. DD Province 1 has only one column, which represents title or actually the province. The matching field, we pick it up from the cities, provinces, which is fine. But instead of attachment, we want to match the province here, which is actually title in that cities, provinces table. Let me just apply it and let me run it. Province, Manitoba, I pick New Brunswick. So you see if you have a different list now, I change it to British Columbia. We have Vancouver and all the other BC cities. I can pick, for example, Quebec, starting with Gatineau. And these are the cities in Quebec. Fantastic. The only thing is that we got to save it and publish it to SharePoint. I leave the testing to you. It, I'm quite sure it works without any problem. So basically, cascading dropdown was a simple thing. But the question is, do we really need that? I think there is a better way for this one. Of course, there are some scenarios when you're looking into category, subcategory, sub, subcategory. But for this specific one that we have only two layers, I think we can do better. Now, let me show you how I do it. I come back here and I want to do it for province two, city two. First of all, I unlock both of them. So unlock and the other one unlock. All right. For the province two, I do not touch the province two. And actually, I take it to the next level. And if I go to the properties, there is a display mode, which is bound to the parent. If you see it is parent.display mode. I don't want to do that. I want to say 
display mode dot view. I save it. This one always is in view mode and nobody can change it. Now for the city, instead of using dropdown, I want to use a combo box. I click on the add control and I want to add a combo box. Click and combo box is added. Just like before, first let me just rename it, cb underscore cities2, and I need to set the width property for this. Just like before, parent width minus 60, right? And the data source, just like before, is gonna be cities and provinces, we are good. The only thing is that it says, okay, which fields you want to display here. I go to edit and I say, show me the city. But for this one, instead of cities only, I want to show cities and provinces. So I pick double and I say, also show me the title, which is actually the province. So let me just run it now. Save and run. You will see if I click on this drop down, oh gosh, this bug is still here. Okay, so if you want to see why it is not showing it in two lines, I've already published a video about it. I will put the link right around here, click on it and see it if you still see it like this. It shouldn't show it like this. It should show like city, right the next line is gonna be Alberta. Regardless, this is something that Microsoft is working on it. We don't wanna waste our time with them. So we go to the fields again for this, instead of double layout, I pick person layout, which technically does exactly the same thing, but at least hopefully it doesn't have that problem. So if I click on this one, it shows you the city, province, city, province, city, province. Fantastic. Great. So if we have this one now, we can continue with the rest, right? So out of the steps that we did, we set the width and X, which is fine. We need to fix the error control. So under this, again, I go to the tree view. Let's find the error message. And I need to say, this is gonna be CB cities two. And again, this one is gonna be CB cities two, we are good. Next step is gonna be setting the display mode to match the parent. So I pick this one and I set the display mode and it's gonna be parent display mode. Great. Set the update property of the data card to the new control selected value. So I come back to the data card. I pick the update property and I set it to cb underscore cities to dot selected items. I wanted to select only one item, but regardless, I have to say selected items. I pick first, right? And for the first item, I say dot, and I need cities. So basically I am telling this form, when form is submitted, look into the selected items of this combo box. Pick the first one and get the city property of this combo box. Let me just save it. And before we move forward and forget it, I'd rather disable allow multiple selection because the user is supposed to pick only one value. Now, if I click on this and I run it, user can see the items here. User definitely knows the city and province. And if the user looks for, for example, Mississauga, the user will immediately see the city and the province. And here we rely on combo box search capability. And if I save it now, it creates the city property of this combo box and sends it to SharePoint. Are we done with everything? I don't think so. Set the default value of the new control to the default value from data card. This one is a little bit tricky. And here is the reason, because default field for the combo box does not do what you expect it to do. For this one, we need to go to the properties of this, and the property that we need here is gonna be default, not default, 
default selected items. I pick the default selected items and I need to get it from the parent. But for the parent, we only have the city value, while here we need to have that record to look into that. So if I look into the items of this, see the items? Items is cities hyphen provinces. I take a copy of it. I bring it here to default selected item, right? And default selected item, regardless, must be a subset of the items. So I bring this guy here and I say filter this guy. I open the bracket, filter it for what? Filter for city equals parent dot default. Does it make sense? So basically we say when this form is open to edit, find the parent and get the default value from the parent, which is a string value of a city. And then match that city with all the records that they are in cities and provinces and find that record and make it the default selected item. And as you can see, even without doing anything, it automatically shows me the Edmonton, which is the actual city here. Are we done with everything? Yes, we did. For this one, if everything is done, I can comfortably delete this guy and I can select this one and move it a little bit higher. Okay. I scroll it up a little bit. If you see this delegate warning, don't worry about it. We don't, we are not dealing with a huge list. So at the moment, I really don't care. Of course, we can save it, we can publish it, and then we can test it inside SharePoint. But here is the thing. What about province now? This is how I do it. For the province, I say default value is not going to be parent.default anymore. It's going to be CB cities dot cities two dot selected items. Of course, I need first one although we know there is only one value inside it, dot province. Of course, province, the internal name is title, that we actually renamed it to province. And here we go. We have Alberta, Edmonton. If I just save it now, and I publish it to SharePoint, okay, just like before I go back to SharePoint, probably I refresh it, or no, let me take a copy of it. Don't waste my time here. I reopen it again. Paste. And now if I click on this one and I open it, I click on Edit All. Now I have Edmonton, which is a city in Alberta. If I click on this dropdown, I can search for the other cities. I can search, for example, Toronto. And I click on it. Automatically, province is selected. And if I just save it, you see Ontario, Toronto is saved. I personally think doing it like this is a lot more efficient because the user can directly search for something, add it, and the other field is automatically populated rather than taking this approach that, okay, pick one province and then pick another city for it. Regardless, both approaches work. And you tell me which one you like better. All right, I'm done with my part. Now it's your turn to go to the comment section and tell me what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.